Hi and welcome to our tutorial. In this video, we're going to show you how to determine the amorphous content of a sample using the spike method with Soroquant software. For this example, we will be using the amorphous example included with Soroquant in the examples folder. First, we're going to create a new task. Now, we know that the phases present in this example are zinc oxide, quartz, and corundum. So we're now going to add those phases to the scan task. The scan file we're using is in the Soroquant examples folder if you want to follow along at home. In program files, Soroquant v4 examples amorph01.cpi. We'll then save it in the temp directory as amorphous01. And now we're ready to start refinements. The first thing we're going to do is a background subtraction. Now that the background has been subtracted, we can then go ahead and do our refinements as normal. First with the auto prescale, then refining the instrument zero, and then finally we'll do a quick refinement on the unit cells the orientation and the W. Now please note that I'm just doing some quick refinements here to illustrate the process and obviously if you were doing a proper sample you'd be paying much more close attention to the refinements as you go. Once you're happy with the refinements it's now time to start looking at your amorphous content. Now the amorphous content is accessible from the results menu under amorphous content. Now as this is an artificial sample we know exactly the composition of the phases as well as the amount of glass which is acting as our amorphous material. This can be seen here if you want to reproduce this at home. So the first thing to do is work out the percentage of amorphous uh, sorry, of your spike that you have added to your sample. In this case, it would be 0.2914 divided by the sum of all these numbers, which turns out to be 22.37%. Now, another no note, you'll see that the Soroquant has determined the spike phase to be corundum. This is because corundum was the last phase added to the scan. You can see these phases are ordered and Soroquant always determines the last phase added to be the spike phase. So once you've added the weight of the spike phase, which is the corundum, which we calculated from above, you can then click the calculate button and this will give you the rough results, including the total amorphous content for the sample. Looking at the results, we can see that Soroquant has calculated the spiked sample amorphous content at 25.5 versus 26.2%. It has also calculated the original sample amorphous content at 32.8% versus 33.8%. Now, considering the limited number of refinements we've done, this is actually a very good result. A few points to note when selecting the spike phase for determining amorphous calculations. The first thing is it's best to select a spike phase that does not have too many overlapping peaks with the phases that are already in your sample. The next important 
point is to try and select a spike phase that has a mass absorption coefficient similar, similar to that that is already in your sample. With that, thank you for watching and see you next time.